Hello, hello, my lovelies, and welcome to a bit of a surprise video. Um, tonight, I thought I would, well, I was inspired by Karen and a couple of other videos, and I thought after playing for a couple of hours and with Darren and Josh being out of the house, I thought I'd jump in and just share the project that I've just made. So you can see here in front of me, in front of you, um, some of the materials that I'm going to use. Let me just backtrack you a bit. If you don't know me, my name is Charlotte Burns and you are watching currently on um, Charlotte Burns' is Close to My Heart with Charlotte Burns. If you enjoy this video, make sure that you give it a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, say hello. I will try and respond uh, as I'm going through the video. But if I'm down here stamping and so forth, I may not see your comments straight away. I will come back and answer you. Also, if you really like it, be sure to share the video. But for those of you who are watching live, thanks for joining me. As I said, I'm going to be showing a card tonight that um, Karen made, and I had actually seen it already on a YouTube video. That I thought, oh, I'd really like to make that, but I was inspired. So I jumped into my craft corner today and made it. And this is what I made. And as I was making it, I thought, this would be a really good one to make for Darren. Now, Darren's turning 50 soon, and I just thought, hmm, I quite like this. So you can see that it flips around, but it also stands up, which is why it's called a pinwheel tower card. So you can see there, it um, is a pinwheel, and it's a tower. So I'm going to show you how to make this. I'm going to give you a few dimensions. Um, eventually, I will actually do up an instructions but for those of you who are clever enough to re-watch this video and pause, you can just check out this video or you can um, Google it and see other videos. So let me, I thought I had everything and now I'm looking for a pen, of course. I'm just going to grab a pen so that I can write down some of the dimensions for you. So you can do screenshots and everything. Uh, is that a pen? That's a pen. Awesome. Okay. So the first thing you need is the card base, which is this here. So this piece here is, um, I know it's four and a quarter inches because that's our standard card size. And it's actually completely the standard card size. So, so your base card stock, this is a very fine tip. This is, what is this? Point 0.1, great. Base card stock is five and three quarter, no it's not. Yes it is. Five and three quarter inch by, I think it's actually supposed to be five and a half, by four and a quarter. Hmm. Alright, so before I go any further, just, this is live guys. So, you know, I have to say that I do this and hope and pray that it all works. So the finished product is definitely five and a half. I don't know if you can see that down there, but it's definitely five and a half by four and a quarter. And then I just need to add it because these are three quarters of an inch. So three quarters, one and a half, um, three, so five and a quarter. No, that doesn't work. Now, let me just, that goes to three and a half plus one, two, oh yeah, so it is. It's five and three quarters. So five and three quarters by four and a quarter is your base cardstock. That is going to work, okay? Then you need three pieces of cardstock, so these three, and they are, again, they're four and a quarter high by two and three quarters. So two and three quarters by four and a quarter so you need those three pieces then the decorative pieces i can't see the camera anymore the decorative pieces that you need you need three pieces and i'm actually using the wanda bulk so all of our pattern paper is double-sided and it just goes together really really nicely so i'm using wanda bulk and you need three, so let me just put a three there, you need one of them, you need pattern paper, paper, yes I may have been able to do this beforehand, but anyway, 
you need three pieces that are, and I can already tell you, they're two and three quarters by four and one quarter. And then you need three pieces, another three, that are two inches by four and a quarter inches. And yes, I'm dealing in inches, not centimeters, just so you know. Okay, so that's what you need, plus extra bits and pieces to decorate. So I'm going to pretty well re, um, redo this card because I really liked it. But I learned a lot doing this card, so I'm going to teach you what I learned. So let's get started. Now, I'm going to use some tools that close to my heart no longer stock. Um, but these are my tools of preference. So here we go. One of them is we used to have this really awesome scoreboard. I liked it. Obviously, some people didn't um, because they stopped supplying it. So this is a scoreboard. You can use any scoreboard or you can even use your... 12-inch uh, trimmer with a score blade on it and you want to score at three quarters of an inch which is there so three quarters of an inch one and a half inches so that's just another three quarters of an inch along then another three quarters of an inch that's, uh, that's so that's two and a quarter inches so that's three score lines and then at three inches so that's your fourth score line and they are all, as I said, three quarters of an inch apart. So hopefully you can see that. I'm going to put that back in there. Otherwise, I will lose it. Okay, I'll move that out of the way. Then you're going to, doesn't matter that that's a bit dirty because this all gets covered. Just fold all of these back. Like so. Okay. Hi, Kylie. What is this? Ha, ha, ha. This is Charlotte playing, and I don't know how long this video is going to go for. I just thought I'm going to annoy some people on Facebook and get lots of notifications. <laughs> so there you go. Now, the other thing to note is I am using two different types of adhesive. I'm using the Tombow, which chances are it's going to run out, the Tombow dry adhesive, and I'm also using the Tombow mono liquid glue, um, which is a wet adhesive. And you'll see, again, you'll see why I'm using two different types later. I have got my tweezers. I will need tweezers. I have a couple of different pairs of scissors as well as some inks and stamps to go in my card. So what I did the first time was I actually stuck this bit together. So you, you roll this all up and then you stick it together so it's got that square in the middle and you can see that is what forms that. But this time I'm going to try and do it without doing it like that. Um, and you'll see why. So what happened was I did that. I stuck it all together. I stuck all these pieces on. And then I went to stamp. And the stamping didn't work. Why? Because there are multi-levels. So I want to try and do all of the stamping first before I stick it all down. So some of the stamping you'll see this I actually stamped and then stuck that on the top. So that's not a problem. Um, these as well stamped and then stuck. But this I stamped on after I'd stuck everything down direct to the paper, as well as this. Now, this one worked fine, but I want to uh, have this so that it's yeah, stamped before it's stuck down. So I'm just having a look to see. I probably can actually, if you're going to be stamping something in there, then you are better off um, stamping it before you stick it together. Now, the other thing to note is that I've done mine like this. So you've got the wider part here and the narrow part there. Uh, I'm going to change it for this card. I'm actually going to turn it this way, not so that these are upside down, but I'm going to turn it so that you've got the wide part here and the narrow part there, just to see what happens. So um, I don't actually know if that's going to work. Yeah, well, I'll make it work. Okay, so I'm going to go with this one first. So it will start with that. So I need to, in that case, stamp the caravan. So the stamp set I'm using is the Wonder card making stamp set. And when this came out, this is in the Close to My Heart July, August catalog. I was just in love, immediately in love because as you possibly heard, Darren and I are going for a trip around Australia for 18 months. And so I saw this, we're taking a caravan, we're gonna be camping, not so thrilled about that. We're going to see mountains and all of that. So I was really, really happy. Thought, yep, definitely got to get this one. 
and I'm glad I did because it made a really good birthday card. So I'm going to pull this out and the first thing, as I said, I'm going to stamp is that little caravan, which is super cute. It doesn't really look anything like our caravan, but that's okay. And I'm going to stamp that caravan in that corner there, which is different to the card that I've done. Let me see if I can put that one. Yeah, okay, so you can see that. And then I'm going to choose the appropriate sized block, which I thought I had all my blocks here. Everything's sliding everywhere. Um, it's bigger than one by one, and I don't have my two by two, so my two by three and a half will have to do. All right, so I'll pick that up. I always season my stamps, even if it's not a brand new stamp. I just find that it works better. I'm going to stamp this in black again. I was happy with the black, so I will stamp it in black. I do want to have a squishy underneath. Now, I could turn my verse mat over because it's got the squishy on the back, but I can't be bothered moving everything again. So I'm just going to grab the foam out of the stamp set and pop that underneath me. I'll ink this up. Make sure that's got a good coverage on it. And I'm actually going to open that right up because I know that this will fit on there if I stamp it in that bottom left hand corner. So I'm doing that. Hold it down for mm, three to five seconds, thereabouts. Lift it off and I have a gorgeous, yes my lighting is terrible, gorgeous little caravan. Then I madly look for something to stamp this off on and go, can't find anything. All right, I'm just going to use my my squishy no my chamois love the new chamois it is such a great tool take this off and put it straight back on my carrier sheet otherwise i lose that okay so there's my first stamp and because that's all i'm going to put in on this one i can actually now glue this bit together so let's cover up the ink so i don't get it all over me move the squishy away what I want to do is put adhesive down just down this piece here and then I'll curl it and stick it down so just I want to make sure that this does stick really well I'm going to put two long solid lines and yes I went onto my mat and then I'm going to fold that in half like this and the reason for that is because you'll notice with the card you want it to be able to fold flat on every angle. So if I fold this in at that point there and then fold this over, I know that I'll get that really good fit. And then I can even come over with my scissors and just burnish that. So that will then allow me to have that really good sit okay there we go all right so there is the first part of my card it is as i said different to this one so this one i've got the narrow panel on the right this one i'm doing the narrow panel on the left now next what i'm going to do is have a look so there's my narrow panel and on the back i've got a wide panel so how this works is you take these three pieces and you actually stick them so one goes there one goes there and then one goes on there because this one stays blank the reason that's blank is so that I can write on it I want to stamp on this one before I stick it down because otherwise it's going to be difficult to stamp there. Now, the other thing to note is the reason I have a strip of the blue cardstock there is two reasons. One is because I put just a bit, put a bit of um, yumminess in there. I put a ribbon on this side, so it covers up the ends of the ribbon. But also when we open the card to this end, it gives that little bit of color there. So that looks really nice as well. So I want to make sure that I stamp this, but also leave enough room for that. So to do that, I have already cut this, and this is three quarters of an inch by four and a quarter inches. So let me just write that down for you. So at the end, I can put this up. 
So we've got our base cardstock, our pattern paper, and then we've got coloured cardstock. And that is three quarters of an inch by, here's one of them, by four and a quarter inch. Okay, so that's that piece. I want to make sure that when I stamp, hmm, that's great. That's not even four and a quarter inches. Hmm, I might need to cut another one of them. When I stamp the sentiment, and I'm sure that's out of thing. When I stamp the sentiment, that it go doesn't go over the top of that. So what I'm going to do is just put a tiny bit. I'm going to use the dry adhesive just put a tiny bit of this on here and stick it down like so there we go and then I know not to go over there so grab that stamp and this one says to another year of adventure and again I liked in the in the sapphire so I'll grab my squishy lay my stamp down now you might notice my technique in applying my stamp to my block what i do is i lay it down so that i can read the words properly so i can read that really easily to another year of adventure if i had it up the other way i can't read it because it's backwards so i know that this is the correct way to apply it to my block and then i simply pop it onto my block season it choose, choose my ink Use my ink. There are some things in this stamp set that I absolutely love. I mean, look, I love the whole stamp set, but there are some that are just to die for. I wouldn't die for them. Don't worry. Don't worry. I wouldn't die for them. Ink this one up and then pop it somewhere here. The idea is to write Dearest Darren and then have the sentiment and then I can write underneath it. So there is that one. There we go. And again, I'm just going to grab my chamois, not squishy, and clean that off. Right. Off. Put it back on here. Okay. What were you guys up to this evening? Were you doing anything exciting? Take this off now. Okay, so Alison, you missed the beginning of this video. What is the name of this card? It is called, <laughs> you're testing me. That's what you're doing, aren't you? Um, no, that's not what it's called. It is called a something tower card. <laughs> it is in the description. Yes, Simone. Um, pinwheel tower card. There you go. There you go. I'm getting better at this. All right. So again, I'm going to put two nice long pieces of sticky down here. Now, this is not my own design. Um, I was watching, well, I did receive this design from my crafty Karen, who makes lots of cards. But also, I was watching a YouTube video by Lisa, and I don't remember her last name. I keep going to say Stens, but it's not Lisa Stens. So I do apologize to the consultant who was showing this video. Um, so not sure if you saw how I did that then. I, um, but I, yeah, I'll show it to you again. So that now works. It's got a little bit of adhesive on it just because of the glue. And now what I'm going to do is have a look at the next section. So I've got that and then I need to work out if I'm happy with having that as the next section, except it will be the boots and everything, and then the uh, the sentiment there. Um, so to another year of adventure. Yeah, that'll work. That will work. All right. So on this piece, I will have the boots because I like the stars behind the... Um, the mountain so this is where we just have a look and we go so this one's going on here now these do fit exactly the card that Karen made hers actually has a gap around so you could take a quarter of an inch off and leave a gap 
the one that Lisa did did had no gap and I I, I like both of them but I wanted to try it without the gap and I quite like that so I'm sticking with no gap this one I don't need to stick down super super well so I'm just going to put little bits on I'm not going to complete this card as much as I have my first card and I'll point out what I'm talking about there in just a sec there are a few little highlights that I've done such as you may or may not notice this little tent here I actually stamped that fussy cut it out and then colored it in with some of the sapphire ink and my watercolor brush I'm not going to put this that one in now I'm not going to show you how I do that that's a fairly simple technique please be aware if you are using the um, the Wanda bulk paper that you don't put it in upside down okay or whatever paper you're using if it's directional just make sure you put it in the right way up so with this I tended to line it up with the outside edge and then if it was too big because my cutting skills are not always perfect yes I have learned not to be a perfectionist I just tuck it under that edge but that one's pretty good okay so that's all I'm going to do on that um, I'm I may end up cutting out some little icons from that stamp set. I'll just bring that over and show you. But most of these are actually icons. So there's a biker tent, a fire, um, a s'more, a signpost. I may end up stamping some and cutting them out, but chances are I won't. Oh, there's a little canoe. I may, because Darren's buying a canoe today. Or what I could do with is with some of the scraps, I could even just cut out some of these and pop them up. Um, again, I'll see how I go. All right, the next piece is this one here, but I'm putting it on the opposite side. So I'm going to grab, these are all up the right way. I'm going to grab this piece, but before I stick it on, I'm going to stamp. And that way I'll have a nice clean image. So I'm grabbing my squishy again. I'll grab the stamp set. I will take the I'm a happy camper when I'm with you stamp. Pop that down. Grab a different block. No, grab this block again. And there you go. You'll see me season my stamps every time I use them just because it's a habit I've got into and it doesn't bother me. Right, so I'm inking that up and I just put it in blue and that's not what I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn this over and stamp it off on here. Then I'm going to, and this is what I love about the chamois. So we used to have the spritz and scrubber, but now with, with that, if you did happen to need to clean your stamp, you left spritz on your stamp, which would then go in your ink, and then it would kind of maybe wreck your ink. With the chamois, you just put water on it. So if you make a mistake like that, all you have to do is clean it off with the water, and with the inks being water-based, it doesn't matter. So I do this which kind of dries it anyway. Then I go back into the black. I don't freak out that I can see that because this is the side I'm stamping on. I might even turn that around and put the starry, more starry side up there. So I'm going to go in black. And I love the fact that for some reason, um, it just fluked it, this stamp fits so perfectly on this piece of paper, which fits in this particular card. And the reason I made the card this size, well, actually, the reason Karen made the card this size was to fit in one of our envelopes. So Karen is a legend, in case you didn't know. Um, all right, I'll just clean it off on there. Not that I need to clean it off, but anyway. Uh, chamois. I haven't used the sentiment, any of the sentiments, more than once throughout this card because that's just the way I roll. Okay, so we've got I'm a happy camper when I'm with you. And then I, just to save a bit of time, I did already cut the mountain. So the mountain does have a die. And I just, I cut it in white because that's what I had on hand. I'm working in my craft corner, not my craft shed, my garage. Um, so yeah, I just I cut it on white. And I'm just going to stamp it with some paprika. Paprika goes with this paper sleet. And again, it was just what I happened to have because uh, I've recently come back from a virtual convention. Now, when I say come back from, my manager ran a mini convention during the virtual convention 
So there were about 20 of us that went away, away and watched replays of the American convention because they like started at one o'clock in the morning for Australia. Um, and the only colours that we needed were black and paprika. So I just happened to have it in this room, which was good because it worked and I'm happy with a paprika coloured mountain. So you've seen, I've just loaded that up on my block. You may also have noticed that I'm using different sized blocks and I find that helpful because um, you'll see later when I do these, well, in a minute when I do these trees, it's just really handy to have different sized blocks that fit your specific stamp. Um, it just yeah makes it so, so much easier. And I do apologise if I'm not um, answering comments at the moment, but I cannot see my camera. So the other thing that I was going to mention, I've pre-cut this. I was going to say something. I don't remember what it was. That's okay. All right. Beautiful. I love Close to My Heart's um, photopolymer stamps. You can see through them so you can see exactly where you are stamping, which is really, really good. Hold it there for a few seconds and then just peel it off. Um, and I'm just going to wipe this clean and I'm devastated because this stamp chamois was so clean and brand new and it's just getting dirty, which I know it's meant to, but it's still devastating for me. <laughs> okay, so there is my little mountain. Such a cool mountain. And then notice these trees. So they're super cute. When you look at this... And then you look at the stamp, you'll notice there are no actual trees. There are these little stick things, hopefully you can see them, little stick things. And it's like, well, huh? That's because the trees, anything in blue is actually a die. So these trees are dies and I have already pre-cut. I didn't pre-cut the mini pine tree, but I did pre-cut these ones. Uh, and I had so much fun because... I'll say it again, I love trees. So what I'm going to do, what I did with this, yes, I'm getting in a mess. What I did with this one is that I actually stuck, I'll move that out of the way. I stuck the trees to the mountain and then I stuck the mountain to the paper. So that's what I'm going to do again. And this time I found my tweezers. Close to my heart, I've brought tweezers back. If you don't have a pair of tweezers or even if you do have tweezers, if you don't have a pair of close to my heart tweezers, trust me, trust me when I say you've got to get a pair of close to my heart tweezers. They are amazing. They are so pointy. Really, really good. All right. I'm going to stamp the branches in black. And the first time I stamped these, I didn't actually know where my little one inch block was. Maybe that's what I was saying. It's really handy to have a block that fits your stamp, especially when it comes to stamping tiny little things like these. So that is a one inch block and that is a stamp. Can you imagine putting that, having to use that on the three by three block that I used before? It's like, it's doable, but it's not comfortable. And life is that comfort. So I've already cut out, please don't drop, good. I've already cut out these little trees. Uh, I wonder if you can see that, let me have a look. Um, okay, yes, there we go. Look, I can zoom. Just remind me to zoom out so someone yeah no don't ring me okay there's a small branches thing and then there's a large one so the small one goes on the small trees and i'll bring over one of the bigger trees just to show you the come on pop up get up just to show you i mean they're all tiny but there's a bigger tree so i'm going to stamp this one as i said in black only needs a tiny little bit of ink you don't need to push it really hard and then excuse if my Grey hair comes over the top. Just do that. Roll it around a little bit. And isn't that cute? It's so cute. Okay, grab my chamois. Clean that off. Definitely stick that one back on. And I can't stress that enough. I have a block. I have a block in my office with a stamp on it. I don't. Well, I kind of do know where it comes from, but I don't know where that stamp is now. And it's like, man, Charlotte, that's so annoying. Why did you do that? I'm going to use my tweezers to lift these off because it just makes it so much easier. Right. So these I've just left on my um, 
emboss and die cutting machine because it, I just <laughs> at least I knew where they were okay so then this one goes on and I'm just going to place it and roll it and then roll it off so you see if I put it straight down and then lift it up it holds it whereas if I roll it it means that and you've got a it's a bit of a technique that you've got to practice but if I place the end down, I can see where it is, roll it around a little bit and then roll it off. It means that the paper stays on my versa mat. Place it on, roll it around and then roll it off. Okay, there's my trees done ski, as we say here. Cover my black so I don't get my fingers in it. And this is where I'm going to use my liquid glue because for me to use this glue on the tiny pieces, no, 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 no. That's not going to be helpful. Just checking that I can, that you can still see me. All right. So my tweezers are going to be super helpful here. All I'm going to do is um, have a look at how I did this card. And I'm happy with how I did that card. Took me a little bit to work it out. Don't you love it when somebody else has done something and you like the look of it and so you can just copy. It's so good. I'm just going to put glue on the top edge and then I'm going to space these onto my card. So I tend to go down at the down at the front, although that's not the front, but anyway, um, I might just flip all of these over so that it just makes it a bit quicker. I've gone to the back at the two edges and the little tree at the back here and then I've gone to the front for the two trees bigger trees that are in the middle so we're just going to go and you don't need much of this glue in fact you don't want much of this glue because when it dries it does dry tacky so if you've got too much on there and it goes over the edges you'll end up with tacky on your card I'll just pop that one on roughly there and so they're not all in a really straight line we just give it we go up and down a little bit with it so this one I did want not quite in the middle just off to the side but so that the bottom of it lined up with the base see what I mean it's sticky so that it lined up with the base of the, that line one of the things I like about wet glue is you can still move it for a little bit after you've put your paper down right so this one is going on this side and it's going over the top of those two trees and I'm that one I pushed up so I'm going to push this one up as well there we go okay and last but not least we'll go this one and again I'm going to push it up and when I say push it up, I mean, see how this one is down low and then this one comes up, this one comes up, comes down and down again. So there we go. There are my trees. Then because it's a nice big area, I'm actually going to take my dry adhesive and I'm going to put dry adhesive on there. I can just put a little bit of wet adhesive on the bottom of the trees just to make sure they do stick probably won't do I won't do these ones because there's a little bit of um, bulk and so the the adhesive won't really dry anyway All right so now I'm just going to stick that here and in fact it's got a really nice position of a star just up the top here so I'm going to stick it so that that position is great All right. now that did have a little bit of adhesive that's left and so it's gone a bit sticky. Once that's all dry, I can get my rub and remove and just gently go over the top of that and that will take that stickiness off. This now goes onto one of the white panels. So let's do that. And I don't need to go completely all the way around that. That's just a waste of tape. But I do wanna go cover the top and bottom and the sides. So this covers the entire piece like that and then we find my card which is here and we've got this on the left rather than the right and then this one is going to go on this side 
So what I'm going to need to do is put adhesive on here. This has gone all sticky. Adhesive on this panel. And this one I am going all the way down because I don't want that to shift at all. And then I'm going to tuck it into there and then squash that down and press down like that. So that's how I've adhered it. And then I've got my panel there. So you can see it's similar, but it's gone the other way. Certainly the stamping is a lot better because I stamped it before I stuck it down. So I'm really happy about that. All right, so the next panel is this one here and it's cheers to s'more years. And in case you don't know what that means, well, apart from cheers to more years, but a s'mores, if you don't know what a s'mores is, I'm going to say it anyway. A s'more is, um, it's usually a biscuit and then a marshmallow that you cook over a fire and then another biscuit and so you cook your marshmallow and you put biscuits either side you squash it you pull it off and you eat it and it's really nice apparently they do it in america a lot okay so for for this panel this one here it is just the stars so i can grab one of my skinny panels if i can find them so there's my wide panels there's my skinny panels and i want stars that one looks dirty, so I'm going to swap and use this one. And again, put adhesive down the sides, top and bottom. And the stars, it's not directional. So I could have it up either way. I don't really mind. And again, I'm going to put this. Now you could stick this down before you stick the entire panel on, but I didn't do that, so... I'm not that fast. Then on this side, so I'm going to have another panel. There it is. On this side, I'm putting this piece with the cheers to small years. Now, what I wanted to show you was I've actually used a second stamp set, and it's this one here. It's the Wishing You Everything, which was in the, well, still is in the, the core catalog. Now, that core catalog, along with the current july august catalog they both retire at the end of july no at the end of august because we're in august now at the end of august these retire so you won't be able to get these anymore if there's anything in the august catalog that you want buy it now all right bluebell oh my goodness bluebell shimmer glitter paper is going the shimmer brush the the ink the ring is probably already gone all of that is going at the end of August. So make sure you place your order or contact me and I will place an order for you. So I've used this bracket here and then I've chopped it in half. Um, and I did actually stamp two at the same time. So that's what that looks like. So just because it's a long one doesn't mean that you can't just chop it off and use it as you like. And then I've just taken a sponge, which I don't often do, but I've just taken a sponge I've cut it into sixth, I think, sixth. And I've rather than ink up this round section here, I, I've actually inked up the pointy end, which has helped me to get right into those um, crevices. Let's call them crevices. All right, now I think what I do need to do, though, is just go like this. Yes, I must have heard you, Alison. I've just zoomed out. Okay. <laughs> Not looking at the camera, so I can't actually tell you who's saying what. So this is going to stick onto that. Um, I'm not going to burden you with watching me stick that on. And I haven't stamped any more s'mores, um, just because I haven't yet. So I can always stamp them. And then I did just fussy cut them out. They're not that hard because they have some nice sharp edges. So it's just a straight cut, snip, snip. Nice, nice. All right. So this one, I'm going to grab a one of these. Um, it doesn't really matter which one I take. I'm going to take this one though. I'll stick this onto here. And this is going to go onto my cardstock panel. Yes, I thought so. So I've just ran out of tape. Now, give me a second because all of my other tape runners are actually empty. So this is a great chance for me. For those of you who have, have this 
reef this sorry this tape runner have never known how to do a cartridge change this is the refill you can get for this tape runner and i am always really really careful when i open this up the reason being that if you squeeze this section at all and that the tape gets stuck that's it you may as well just chuck it in the bin so this tape runner has oh look it's open has a little slot here one's close and one's open so you need to switch it to open and then when you finish you need to switch it to close i had a bit of trouble when i was at the mini convention i ran out of tape and it didn't want to play the game for me so let's hope that it works well today all right so you open that up you take that out now there is only one way to put this in because one side of i don't know if you saw me do that but i took that out very carefully and look it did it just stuck okay um one side has a hole in it the other side is flat the hole goes on there okay you do need that open to do this so you should be able to just simply pop that on there you can't do it any other way then you close that over oh good it worked kind of close it close it over and then slide that up that will then lock it in place and you should be able to keep going let's see should be able to i usually have a couple of these with um tape in it so that if i run out i don't get frustrated and chuck a hissy <laughs> i can just keep going and grab another refill um sorry grab another tape runner and then when i get to the end of the project uh, and i think about it i can then do a refill so i hope that i'm doing the right thing now all right i'm covering this up before i stick it down because i'm just trying something different as i said you don't have to you can always stick this down and then cover it up that's fine as well so now again i am putting some lots of tape on this now for some reason it doesn't want to roll to start with so all i do with that is i just roll the tape with my finger until it feels sticky and then it will go again rolling that down there and we're rolling that down there, there we go and then this again so i'm going to put it in there and then i'm folding that now this is this is like you know super sticky tape okay and that doesn't want to come off and i did mark that up a bit but that's okay maybe i'll give this one to darren um <laughs> it's okay he doesn't watch this channel so there's my next uh, card, which is this one here. Okay, then my final card, which is this one here, is birthday wishes. So this will be interesting because the birthday and the wishes goes this way, whereas I now want it to go this way. This is the base card, which means that anything that I stamp on here, I actually need to stamp before I stick this down so i'm going to be stamping it onto this i hope i'm making sense okay let's just move some of this out of the way i don't need the wet adhesive anymore so with this particular page let's call it a page with this particular page yeah that's not going to work that's okay i'm going to adjust that with this particular page what I did was I took the banner from here and I did the birthday and I did wishes, which is the birthday and the wishes. And then I took uh, this stamp set here, which could be a road. It could be a river. I don't know. I just did it as a blob. And I stamped that onto the page. Now, I have already cut the dies for the birthday and wishes, but I wanted to show you the stamping of it because when I went to stamp it, I had a couple of issues. And I thought, I'm going to do a video. I might as well show them how I overcame the issues. Let me just do my rubbish up. Okay. So, what we have here is this. This is a really good stamp set, by the way, girls. It really is. What we have here is this banner. Now the banner is not a solid stamp. It's got two 
um, you'll see in a minute, it's got two parts. So see like that? Yeah. So if I put that down, there's a chance that it's not going to... Now it's must have been a brand new stamp because when I put it down earlier, it actually stuck to itself and it like that. Now, if you put a block onto that, you're not going to get the beautiful um, clear banner. You might even see that it was a bit wonky up the top. The way I overcome that is the stamp knows the shape that it wants to be. So if it's a brand new shape, what you need to do is just untack it a little bit by just, you know, giving it a bit of beating up and then lie it on a squishy. This squishy tended to be a little bit too tacky. The back of a Versamat seems to be work really, really well with this type of stamp. So any stamp that needs to be straight, for instance, even this stamp here on the, um, I'm going to flip this over, on the Wanda card making. So it's a long straight stamp. If you want it straight and you go to stick this on a block, there's a chance that it's going to, oops, wrong way. There's a chance that it's going to bend. So the best way to get that straight is just to drop it on something that's not so sticky and then you can put it on your block. So that's what I've done with this one. Actually it has not done what it did the first time I was playing with it. That's okay. Hopefully you get the idea. All right. Uh, I really would prefer a different block. I can see a block there. That's better. All right. So I'm using the one... No, the two inch by three and a half inch. It's got a label on the side, so I'm cheating. Then before I stamp it, I'm actually just going to check and make sure that it is the correct shape, which it looks like. Good. I will season it gently and I'll have a look. I did black for the actual banner and then I did sapphire for the words, which again, I'm happy with. So I'm gonna stick with that. I'm going to put both of the banners there so I can do them one straight after the other. Ink it up. Another thing to note too is if you just have a line stamp, so this stamp just has lines on it, there's no solid parts, all I do is I tap. I don't do my swishing, I just tap. So then, excuse my head if it's in the camera view. Hold it down for a few seconds. That will probably stick. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. And a second one. And I think I might have gone off a bit with that one. Oh, that was another point I was going to make. Some people prefer to stamp and then cut with your thin cuts. Other people, like myself, generally speaking, I will cut and then stamp. The reason I cut and then stamp is that if I have a piece of paper, uh, so let's grab, I don't know, a piece of paper, a piece of paper. I've got piles of paper everywhere. Let's say I grab a piece of paper and I go stamp, 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 stamp. I don't necessarily know how much of a gap to leave between that stamp and that stamp to allow for the die cut. So that's why I like to cut and then stamp. But as I said, some people like to stamp and then cut and that's okay as well. And sometimes you do need to cut and then stamp, and other times you definitely need to cut and then, st yeah, the other way. So sometimes you need to do something different. All right, I can take that off and put it back. I know what I'm trying to say, even if nobody understands me. Put that one back on the carrier sheet and grab my two sentiments. So the first one I'm going to do is birthday, and this one I'm going to do in sapphire. And it's already shaped. Now, if I wanted that to go straight, I could actually bend it on my block and make it go straight. But I don't, so I'm just going to line that up. Again, loving the fact I can see straight through that block and see that it is spaced perfectly on my little banner. I will clean that off. Hopefully I get all of this done before Darren gets home. He did ring before and say that he was at... McDonald's they were stopping to get McDonald's and they've been waiting 24 24 25 minutes for their order um, They'll be home in two hours. So I'm hoping that 
he doesn't come home in the middle of this because I told him I was making his birthday card. His response was not anything like, oh, that's nice. No, it was, but my birthday's not for ages. Yeah, okay, sure, honey, no worries. When you've got an idea, you run with it. Okay, so there's my birthday wishes. Now, what you might notice is that it was too wide for the page. So what I had to do was stick it down and then cut it off. Now, that was difficult when this was already stuck to my card. So this time it's going to be a lot easier. So I'm going to put adhesive on both of these. And I'm again using dry adhesive. And I am actually going to put adhesive all over the whole lot even though I'm going to be cutting some off because I just think that's going to be easier to stick down once it is um, adhered and the refill has gone yucky. Possibly why Tombow is, has discontinued this particular tape runner and they're bringing out a new tape runner. So come the 1st of September, you will be able to order the new Tombow Air I believe it's called the Tombow Air Tape Runner. And it is refillable, which is great. It has a little bit more tape on it. I have already looked at that. It's got a little bit more tape on it, um, about two more, two meters more, and you can buy the refills. The refills come in a pack of two though. Okay, so this time I said birthday wishes. I'm gonna say the same on this one. I reckon I'm gonna be able to get this a lot straighter as well. Move that across to about there, birthday wishes, reminds me of a stamp that we've got that said birthday fishes, okay, birthday wishes, and as you know, I want to stamp the little pathway, now if I had one of those gorgeous gel pens, I would also put a little line up the middle so that it looked like a road, but I don't have one of them, Yet, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Oh, I left the wishes on there. Right, remove wishes, put this on. You also might see me using the block in different directions. That's just, again, how I roll. And I did this with Sapphire. Uh, I'm happy with Sapphire, so I'm gonna keep going with Sapphire. Birthday wishes. Now, because this is a solid stamp, as far as it's not just lines, I will actually do the swishing technique. So I go tap, 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 swish, swish, swish. I check and make sure that I've got enough ink on there. And then I'm gonna line up that bottom bit with the, sorry, the top bit with the bottom of the banner and swish down. There we go. And that's lovely. Lovely, tell your mother. I don't know where I get some of my sayings from. Okay. Next time I do one of these, I'm going to set up a computer in front of me so I can see your comments because I feel like I'm talking to myself. I will go back and read all of your comments and questions and I'll answer them even if you answer them yourself. So the next thing I want to do with this is to chop these off because I'll be sticking them on the left hand side and I'm going to use my non-stick scissors. So close to my heart non-stick scissors are the best. Um, I'm just going to be concentrating a little bit. I want to make sure that that goes on the bottom one. That is the wishes part and then this is the birthday part. So I want to make sure that I have them top and bottom over there. Yes, these scissors are the best. They are non-stick, so I can cut all this sticky stuff and they won't get sticky. Micro tip, which means that I can get right into the corners and it doesn't split, it's absolutely beautiful. The other scissors that Close to My Heart have are just the regular um, fine tip. These are really great for fuss cutting as well and also cutting ribbon. So if you go to cut ribbon with these scissors, what happens is it just slides because it's Teflon. So that's why I have both, which is fantastic. All right, I am, yes, I did do that right, good. Okay. I am going to struggle with this adhesive. However, what's gonna be easier is I'm just gonna waste this roll by doing it all the way around. And what I find is if you've got one of those rolls that's just being a bit painful, simply Start where it's sticky and it will grab it and pull it along. Okay, birthday wishes. This one goes on like this. 
no i want to do it from this end thank you for reminding me like that there we go and then we put the little stick stick this bit on there so that will go on there let me just get my tape runner and i put it on this bit so there's lots of different ways that you can do this card of course you might choose to do the whole this whole piece in one color you might want to do a different colored cardstock as a background um but i'm enjoying using the wonder bulk pattern paper i do want to get this stuck down before i put my extra bits on i keep forgetting to go from this side uh, and that way i can match up those bits hopefully perfectly i'm not a perfectionist anymore anymore she says she says okay so we lift this up and i just find it's a lot easier with my tweezers because it means that my fat pudgy fingers don't get in the way so there's one and come on i am not left-handed by any stretch of the imagination and there is two okay birthday wishes now on this card i wrapped it around there because that then went around to this side but what i didn't realize is that it, it's not going to work on this one at all okay so i will think of something else to do although i could yeah no i've already stuck that down that's okay that's all right I'll figure out something. I'll probably still put, I'll have to cut another piece, but I'll probably still put a piece of this down here because I think it looks good. Um, and there you go. So we've got my original card on the right and a new card on the left. So totally up to you whether you want the long part on the right-hand side or the left-hand side. It's just a matter of when you're constructing it, turn your card around and it will swap it over. So we've got to another year of venture. And then I'm a happy camper when I'm with you. Haven't done this on this page yet, but cheers to small years with some smalls. And birthday wishes. So this one's a lot straighter because I did it before I stuck it in. That's okay, Darren won't comment. And we're back to another year of adventure and that will stand up and they can put it however they want showing whatever they want which you can't actually see that um, so there you go I hope that you enjoyed this video please remember to um, like comment and all that sort of stuff I will be posting this sort of video on YouTube so I'll let you know when that happens here on the Facebook page I'll let you know I've gone on to YouTube I'm also, I have just started on TikTok, believe it or not. All I seem to be doing is wasting time on TikTok by watching all the funny videos. But I have started on TikTok. If you're interested, if you're on TikTok, come and visit me. It is create with an eight, it with Charlotte. Because I felt create it with Charlotte Burns was a bit too long. So thanks again for watching. I hope that you get to crafting and create some beautiful stuff. Um, until next time, I will say... My usual, stay safe and keep crafting and bye for now.